California has come a very long way in a very short period of time when it comes to our efforts to build a clean, sustainable economy. Our progress has been built on a partnership between the public and private sectors through the adoption of smart policies and the development of cutting edge technologies that help, help meet our ambitious policy goals. In just 10 years, in just 10 years, we have increased our electricity generation from renewable sources to nearly 25%, put almost 150,000 electrical vehicles on the road, and reduced the smog-forming emissions from our cars and trucks by easily over 90%. We lead the nation in clean energy job creation with over 400,000 jobs in the sector. Our state is home to the world's largest solar array, which went online this year in the Mojave Desert. We have the nation's largest wind energy facilities at the Alta Wind Energy Center at the Tehachapi Pass. We now lead the nation with more than half of all clean energy capital investment. It's all happening right here in the great state of California. Skeptics. Skeptics have always said our clean air policies would destroy the economy, that we set naive and unrealistic targets. Yet, here we are. Here we are today, well on our way to meeting those targets, with an economy that is stronger than ever, with an economy that is the envy of other states throughout the country, with an economy that has added in 2014, 462,000 new jobs. We have shown in California we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions and protect the environment while maintaining a strong, competitive global economy. We also know, we also know that the cost of doing nothing is far worse, far worse than the cost of transitioning to cleaner energy sources. In fact, analysts at Citibank project the cost of doing nothing, the cost of inaction for the global economy could easily amount to over $40 trillion by 2060. $40 trillion by the year 2060. That's the cost of doing nothing. Status quo. Purely from an economic standpoint, decisive climate action makes sense. And there is groundswell support in the business community where companies are starting to recognize the risk that what will happen to recognize the risk and take action. Last month, leading companies joined President Barack Obama in support of Clean Power Plant, announcing unprecedented investments in clean energy. Today, I'm very proud to stand with some of the companies that are leading the way forward right here in the Golden State. These companies understand that we have a moral and economic obligation to act and to address the issue of climate change. They understand that this is a challenge that is bigger. It is bigger than one company. It is bigger than any one industry. It is bigger than any one politician or legislative body, or state, that we need to act swiftly and decisively to avoid economic and public health catastrophe. Rather than stand in the way of progress, they want to be part of the solution, the solution that we are currently looking for, for ways to help address climate change. I want to thank very much Ceres and all the members of BICEP I want to thank the Silicon Valley Leadership Company. I want to thank Proterra. I want to thank Regatta Solutions. I want to thank the Consumers Union, who just recently came on board of support of SB 350 and 32. And I want to thank the Small Business California Coalition that also just came on board in support of SB 350 and 32. All of these companies all of these companies provide leadership on this incredibly important issue. 
And with that, I'm very pleased to welcome Rochelle Wenger of Dignity Health to the podium. Rochelle. Ah, there you go. Good morning. I'm Rochelle Reyes Wenger, Director of Public Policy and Community Advocacy for Dignity Health. Dignity Health is the largest private, not for profit healthcare system in California with 32 hospitals and over 55,000 employees across three states. I want to uh, give a special thank you to Nonprofit Group Series, which uh, organized letters signed by more than two dozen companies, uh, including Ben & Jerry's, Mars, Gap, Levi Strauss, North Face, Autodesk, Semantic, just to name a few. And they are very much in support of SB 32 and SB 350, which are being delivered today in various offices. Our deepest gratitude to Senators Pavley and De Leon for their leadership. We would not be here today if not for their courage and their great hope for us as a state. You are our heroes, our history makers. For Dignity Health, we believe that there is this profound connection between human health and the health of the planet. This is why we have taken to heart what these measures will mean to the communities we serve, to all communities, especially the poor and the vulnerable among us. For Californians, there is no denying the heat is on. The not knowing about our climate crisis that we are in right now is no longer an option for us. The direct effects of climate change is real. For over a dozen years, we've been feeling the record-breaking temperatures and the persistent drought made worse by climate change. And we are experiencing the indirect effects already threatening population health through adverse changes in air pollution, spread of disease vectors, food insecurity and undernutrition, displacement and mental ill health. The suffering in our communities are real. The power is in our hands today to make a difference in stemming the release of harmful greenhouse gas emissions. We know that the cost of inaction, as the Senator has mentioned, is much more than the cost of action. We have made such advancements to further healing and health in our nation. However, the Lancet reports that the implications of climate change threatens to undermine the last half century of gains in development and global health. We believe that SB 32 and SB 350 are common sense policies. They are bold and ambitious, yet designed for success. Above all, they are necessary and what our state needs now. As a healing mission, we know that these measures will help protect human health and the environment. As a business, we rely on these measures as good for our economy, further creating jobs and continuing to spur innovations. We mustn't be, to be deterred by fear or the hard work that is ahead of us. There is real payoff ahead. The rest of the country and the global community are watching, and they should. California can show the world how tackling climate change could be the greatest global health opportunity of the 21st century, and I would submit the greatest economic opportunity as well. Thank you. And next is Kent Leacock. Hi, I'm Kent Leacock, and I'm the Director of Government Relations for Proterra, the leading U.S. manufacturer of zero-emission commercial transit buses that are in service in California and numerous states across the U.S. Proterra commends Senator President Pro Tem, Kevin DeLeon, Senator Fran Pavley, and Senator Mark Leno for their leadership in advancing California's greenhouse gas emission goals and growing jobs throughout the state with SB 350 and SB 32. The U.S. transit market is over a billion dollars, and as we transition to zero emission buses, it is important for California to lead the nation and beyond from the perspective of job creation in manufacturing and deploying these zero emission buses in California. California's strong environmental policies help the support the deployment of zero emission public transit buses 
to ensure that all California residents have the opportunity to ride and commute by electric vehicles and re realize the health and other associated benefits from not breathing in diesel particulate matter and other carbon-based uh, exhausts. In addition, which is especially important, we are expanding our manufacturing to Southern California and we are also establishing a West Coast headquarters in the Bay Area as a direct result of California's progressive environmental and energy policies. These are direct, this is direct job growth as a result of the leadership. In partnership with the California Energy Commission and the Governor's Office of Business and Economic Development, we are excited to expand this manufacturing process here in California. We will be providing hundreds of direct and indirect jobs in the coming year, and that's just the start. We will be producing our state-of-the-art state emission bus in the city of industry, and we will help clear the air in communities throughout California and beyond, offering zero emission technology that is accessible to everyone. These jobs will be high-tech engineering, R&D, and even fully benefited assembly line hourly positions. We look forward to being a growing part of fulfilling California's leading environmental policies, including AB 32, the governor's zero emission vehicle action plan, the low carbon fuel standard, SB 350, goal of reducing petroleum use by 50% by 2030, and SB 32. Thank you. And now I'd And now I'd like to turn it over to Ben Thompson. Thank you. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Thompson from Autodesk. So at Autodesk, we recognize that climate action is good for business. We see it in our own operations and also in the millions of designers, architects, engineers, and planners that we serve with design technology. Climate, is, climate action is good for business. We see it in our operations through energy efficiency investments, saving our company millions of dollars and cutting our emissions by 27% and helping us to attract and retain the best talent here in California. More interestingly, we see that climate action is good for business through the products and services that we bring to market, low carbon design solutions that grow our top line, grow our business and create economic opportunity for our customers. All this while helping to avert catastrophic climate change. Clear policy signals like AB 32 showed us the direction on climate action and is working. It's increasing investment, it's creating jobs, and it's reducing emissions. Clear policy signals like SB 32 and SB 350 and low carbon fuel standards will further enable my company, Autodesk, to meet our own science-based reduction targets and take up our renewable energy from 40% to 100%. But more importantly, these policies will create the right environment for the private sector, for Autodesk, and for our design customers to win more work here in the state and to innovate on low carbon design technologies, to innovate on low carbon buildings and infrastructure, and to innovate on low carbon vehicles and transportation. At Autodesk, we have shown that we can grow our business while shrinking our footprint in those of our customers and theirs. These policies will enable us to continue just doing just that. I'm really proud to be born and raised in California, and I'm proud that my headquarters is located in California. And I'm even more proud that as the nation implements the EPA Clean Power Plan, and as the world pushes for a deal in Paris, they'll be looking to California for leadership. These bills are good for business, climate action is good for business, and that's why Autodesk is supporting them. So now I would like to introduce <laughs> Andrea Marr, uh, United States Navy veteran and Vice President of Energy Services from Regatta Solutions. My name is Andrea Marr, and I'm a veteran of the United States Navy and a member of Operation Free, a nationwide coalition of more than 5,000 veterans who advocate for securing America with clean energy. I applaud Senate President Pro Tem Kevin DeLeon and Senator Fran Pavley for proposing le legislation that will make our state cleaner and more energy efficient. I joined the military because I care deeply about protecting our country. I'm here today because I, along with the consensus of national security experts and senior military officers, believe that climate change is a grave national threat. 
SB 350 and SB 32 are significant steps towards decarbonizing California and fighting climate change. I encourage our representatives to support these key measures. California is one of the largest economies in the world, and when we take on truly transformational clean energy legislation, the world pays attention. I believe that these laws will create jobs and improve air quality, but more importantly, we can play a role in increasing global stability and sending fewer of our men and women in uniform into harm's way. Thank you for the opportunity to stand by the work of Senators Pavley, De Leon, and Mark Leno. Thank you. Up next, uh, we have a great champion on a whole variety of issues, but a champion today on the issue of climate change. Uh, he's my budget chair. He's also my joint uh, co-author. He's been with me from day one uh, on this incredible uh, adventure, and that is Senator Mark Leno. Thank you, Kevin, not only for the introduction, but of course for lead authoring SB 350, and always an honor and pleasure to be with my colleague, Senator Fran Pavley, historic leader on the issue of climate change and reduction of greenhouse gas emissions, and also no surprise that so many business leaders are with us as well, along with a voice for experts in national security. You know, when we first created our renewable portfolio standard in year 2000, it was based on a very simple concept, that as this demand for new technology, wind and solar, biofuels and others, would increase exponentially as a result of the RPS, cost for these technologies would fall equally, ever in greater parity with fossil fuels. And with that occurrence, we could finally wean ourselves from a fossil-fueled 20th century to a renewably-fueled 21st century, which is where we all know we need to get if we're going to have a planet to leave for the next generation. We have proved our critics wrong every step of the way. It has worked. And at the same time, creating hundreds of thousands of new, uh, uh, new jobs, creating new technologies, and attracting over 60% of all the nation's venture capital to California. The smart money in this country is in California for good reason, because our public policy making encourages and rewards innovation and creativity. Why would we change paths now? The world is not only watching California, it's following California. Along with Fran's leadership on our clean fuel, our low fuel, our low carbon fuel standard, first Great Britain and then the entire European Union followed. And the same can be said with our work on tailpipe emissions and greenhouse gas reductions. It's for good reason that our opposition is investing so many million dollars in lies, scare tactics, and deception. It's because they are desperate. I'm reminded of Abraham Lincoln's famous quote that with public sentiment, nothing can fail. And without it, nothing can succeed. I say this in the context of a recent PPIC poll, which indicated that of those polled, 82% support the goal of increasing our renewable portfolio standard to 50% by 2030. 73% support reducing our use of petroleum by 2030 by 50%, and 70% support doubling our energy efficiency in existing buildings. The public is with us. With public sentiment, nothing can fail. So keep your eyes on these next couple of weeks. Maybe a bumpy ride. But for the sake of the planet, you've heard from those in the public health, in, in, in the healthcare sector, in the transportation sector, in design and uh, creativity sector. All of these business interests know that their future is tied to our renewable future. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you very much.
Oh, I'm supposed to introduce. Yeah, to go. Yes, please. okay, come on in. We, just so you know, we just have a couple more folks and then we'll go to Q&A. Yes. My pleasure to introduce Tim McRae, who's the energy director at the Silicon Valley Leadership Group. And the energy, energy director helps the leadership group members and partners define and carry out energy-related policy. He is a veteran to renewable energy, having developed commercial wind projects for Aries Power and Industrial, worked on sustainability and energy efficiency at PG&E, as well as climate change policy for the British government. Tim McRae. Thank you, Senator. Hi, I'm Tim McRae, the Senior Energy Director for the Silicon Valley Leadership Group. First, Silicon Valley Leadership Group thanks Senator Pro Tem De Leon and Senators Pavley and Leno for their leadership on these important climate and clean energy bills. Silicon Valley Leadership Group supports the ambitious but achievable goals of SB 32 and SB 350. These bills extend the legacy of AB 32, which has reduced harmful air pollution, attracted billions of dollars of investment in California, and helped spawn the creation of thousands, hundreds of thousands, of advanced energy house, uh, businesses and jobs. That sector, the clean energy economy, has over 430,000 jobs and workers in California today. Further, Next 10 projects that an ambitious greenhouse gas reduction target will create 1 million jobs and a 6% increase in gross state product by 2030. Silicon Valley Leadership Group has more than 390 members who support the goals of these bills. This includes tech companies and clean energy companies. The tech companies include the names that you've heard that are the forefront of innovation in Silicon Valley, Google, Apple, Yahoo, Facebook. And the clean energy companies are at the forefront too, folks like SunPower and Nest and Finelight and Tesla. The tech sector sees the climate, process, climate crisis as a problem to be solved and we look forward to participating in the solutions that these bills will drive. Though we are Silicon Valley based, the companies that I represent have workers throughout the state, for example, solar installers putting panels up on roofs of California residents all over California. The business case for SB 32 and SB 350 are clear. The business case for SB 32 is that businesses need time to make investment decisions and extend greenhouse gas emission limits and targets now give them adequate time to do so and the certainty against which they can plan. It also extends targets from AB 32 that have been good for Silicon Valley and good for the environment. The business case for SB 350, especially the large targets it sets, is that it will help transform our economy, continue that transformation in a positive, low carbon way, and that transition is made better now than later. There are some, uh, with that, I thank you very much for your time, and I'd like to turn this over to Senator Fan Fran Pavley. Francesca. Francesca. Uh, Kevin calls me Francesca, but that's, uh, that, I'm okay with that, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much, and I want to thank the pro tem for his leadership. He's been a tremendous partner and someone I look forward to carrying the torch for uh, several years to come. I want to thank Senator Leno, who, who's been involved in this, in this journey on so many good policy issues and uh, always a supporter and articulate, and thank you very much. And to Ceres, thank you for coordinating this event today. Um, special shout out to Dignity Health and the other 40 health organizations are supporting SB 350 and SB 32 because they get the link between climate change and public health, whether it's asthmatic conditions, excessive heat episodes and what that means to the public, vector-borne diseases, and the list goes on. Also, uh, thank you very much to uh, the Truman Foundation. For those of you who don't know, the um, uh, military has been very interested in our policies here in California for years. Uh, hearings held uh, oh, almost a decade ago looked at climate change as one of the greatest national security risks facing the planet. Mass migrations of people during drought, problems associated with that. But SB 32 is good for the environment, it's good for business, and it's good for public health. Uh, Governor Davis said when he was signing AB 1493, that's the clean car law that's now a national standard, um, he said, 
despite all the distract, uh, detractors of this and the charges of uh, we would be rationing fuel and limiting people's right to drive, et cetera, et cetera. He said, you know, the sky isn't falling, it's just getting cleaner. And he signed the bill back in 2002. And so a shout out for Gray Davis, because this, uh, this is a little his historic story here of um, how climate change has been part of our policy in supporting uh, a healthy economy and a healthy environment. Also, back in 2006, uh, Speaker Fabian Nunez and I jointly authored uh, AB 32, and Governor Schwarzenegger was very clear in hearings and signing of the bill that indeed AB 32 is good for the environment and good for the economy. And Arnold, if you're listening, you were right. Um, Senator De Leon mentioned the cost of doing nothing, and I think that's really something important to think about and put into, into context. Uh, we are experiencing extended periods of drought. Climate scientists over the years have said this would be one of the characteristics of a warming climate, but coming with long periods of drought, wildfires, increased wildfires, and how that affects not only public health, um, but our ability to uh, uh, sequester carbon, all a problem. Uh, we also are very concerned about sea level rise, loss of property values, rising insurance rates. These are increasingly important problems. The cost of doing nothing is real, not just a cliche, but can be documented. This measure will provide regulatory certainty for investors and innovators. Senator Leto, you're right. 60% of all the venture capitalist dollars have come to California. Not just by chance. They have told me by setting a clear market signal in AB 32 and going forward to SB 32, by putting a cap on emissions and rolling back, you've sent that market signal for investment and innovation. As of 2006, over $30 billion of private investment dollars have come here to California. Thank you to those policies. Um, they also like, businesses also like SB 32 and AB 32 because it provided a flexible, flexible framework. They wanted that clear market signal. They wanted time to invest these new technologies, roll them out thoughtfully. So our agencies working with the private sector have done just that. Um, we're seeing tremendous amount of success from AB 32. We have a good record to stand on. SB 32 just continues that regulatory framework. But it also invites and encourages legislative oversight and the development of those regulations to make sure, as required in AB 32 and SB 32, that they're cost effective and technologically feasible. And we can do that. You know, the governor is moving forward with or without us. Governor Schwarzenegger set executive targets. It's also in AB 32 to 2050, realizing the science requires those reductions. And also Governor Brown has looked at midterm targets at 2030. Um, that's done by executive order. They're moving forward. I want the legislature to engage in this process by supporting Senator De Leon's bill, my own bill. It's in the best interest of California. It's in the best interest of the planet. Thank you very much for including me in this presentation today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Edwin Foe and I'm a clean energy worker. We need clean energy policies that create jobs. Bloom Energy is not only a California invented technology, it is a California manufacturing company that creates jobs and supports real families. Thank you.